Hi guys and welcome to Get Indie Gaming and to the fourth part of the series where we showcase 10 more indie games due out this year or perhaps the next we're most looking forward to playing. You can find the links to parts 1, 2 and 3 down in the description and it's in those videos where you'll find such games as Silk Song, Carry On and Welcome to Elk amongst many more. Do let us know down in the comments which of these you're most excited about and with that let's crack on with the rundown. Up first, and in no real particular order, we have Spiritfarer, which is due out later in the year. First shown off at the Microsoft press event at last year's E3, it was for us at least one of the highlights of the whole presser. Here you play as Stella, a fairy master to the deceased and alongside your cat, you befriend spirits before releasing them onwards into the afterlife. In this new trailer, released only yesterday as this video airs, we're able to see more in terms of the actual gameplay with it focusing on what appears to be quite a tight and all round delightful looking platforming elements that will play off against the aforementioned narrative sections and resource management. With a single and two player co-op mode, Spirit Spiritfarer will be coming to the PlayStation 4, the Switch, the Xbox One and PC before the year's end. Up next and at number 9, Airhead is most likely coming out next year, with it being a 2.5D platforming puzzle adventure with Metroidvania elements which looks to take visual cues by way of its embrace of bold colours and bleak shadows. While as could be expected it features a sprawling and interconnected world, there's a really interesting mechanic at play here and I really want to see more of it. You play as the titular airhead, a small boy who uses a round inflatable organism as a head which slowly deflates, meaning you're required to keep it inflated by way of air tanks you find within the game. As always with these titles, you progress and by doing so you learn new abilities which in turn open up new areas with there being a myriad of creatures and machines looking to hinder and prevent your way through what's being called a personal journey of companionship, discovery and responsibility. Fans of the channel will know we love these adventures and we've certainly added this to our wish list with it also coming out on all the usual consoles. As always, you can find links to this and other games in this rundown down in the video's description. Moving on and at number 8 we have Endling which is coming out almost certainly not before the end of the year but out into the next. It comes from Herobeat Studios based out of Barcelona and will feature a side-scrolling survival narrative adventure that tells the tale of the last mother fox and her cubs trying to endure and make it through within a distant future world where over exploitation of the natural resources have endangered the global wildlife. We've chosen many of these games in this particular episode of our most wanted series due to their visuals and goodness me, Endling looks astoundingly pretty with it. As for the gameplay, well the developers have made it clear that stealth is a vital part of the game, with you needing to avoid the many dangers of the forest all while collecting food and keeping your cubs as safe as you're able. Endling will be out on PC and consoles. If I'm lucky, maybe I'll get out of here. Let's keep going and at number 7 we find Out of Place, which is coming from a small team who met while studying at Hamburg University of Applied Sciences, with them beginning the work on this game full time in March of last year. So what the folks here are working on kind of looks familiar and yet that little bit different. In this one, players will need to prove themselves within what on the face of things look to be challenging and intense combat sections with it featuring gameplay similar to such things as Hyper Light Drifter with touches of Zelda here and there. Although there is a twist, Out of Place will be looking to break and subvert the conventional mechanics of these kind of experiences and with it deliver upon something that comes with a more tactical nuance with additional freedoms of play and choice within the combat systems. It's also looking to expand the type of gameplay and atmospherics we've seen within classic 2D games such as Flashback, Heart of Darkness and The Way into a 3D world. So yes, this is clearly an ambitious project and one we're keen to keep an eye on over the developmental cycle. Does it click with you? If so, let us know down in the comments. Hero. 
rough night in Clawville. What now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. At number six, and let's say hello to Chicken Police, a game that's only very recently popped into our crosshairs. Again, it's primarily the visuals and art style that have thus far won us over, clearly taking a lead from the film noir era of around the 1940s, with it also having a dash here and there of such games such as Grim Fandango and Snatcher. On top of this, we have a narrative-driven adventure game in what seems to be a complex and yet intuitive interrogation system, all within a mystery-solving element to the gameplay. Here you'll interrogate suspects and others while collecting essential information, all within a two-rooster detective story that will see you scratch your way into the darkest reaches of a sinister city. Now this all looks a tad odd and yet wonderful with it. Chicken Police is slated to come out next year for PC and all of the usual consoles. Next up at number 5, and having recently featured within the Wholesome Games Direct Showcase, Little Witch in the Woods is a cute and adorable looking fantasy role playing game where you get to play the part of a trainee witch in this pixel art stunner. You play as Ellie, an apprentice, and for the next three years you'll make potions, study magical creatures and help the local townspeople in rebuilding what seems to be their tattered homes and village, all the while trying to become a fully fledged witch. Little Witch in the Woods appears utterly delightful and is coming to the PC and the Nintendo Switch where it already feels quite at home at some point next year. Expected out in autumn of this year and at number 4, Skeleton Crew caught our eye of late with it being a cheeky looking platform brawler set against a gothic landscape where you can use everything and anyone to help smash, grab and slash your way to victory. As we often say here at Get Indie Gaming, show us a decent couch co-op and you'll make us very happy. And it's that aspect of Skeleton Crew that has us most interested with up to four people being able to tackle this game locally and online with others as well. This all looks so pleasantly frantic and silly enough, so we suspect it could be a really good crowd teaser with its 20 levels, 18 playable characters and good old fashioned boss battles. Skeleton Crew, as we mentioned earlier, is out this coming autumn by way of PC and Steam. Number three and the second game in the showcase to feature heavy stealth elements, El Iho is an isometric game where you're playing as a young boy as he makes his way across an inhospitable landscape in order to find his mother. While we haven't played this one since August of last year where we got hold of it at Gamescom in Cologne, we can still easily recall how the puzzle game plays with you by way of its light and dark mechanic. As the developers have said in the past, the stealth aspect here makes so much sense as after all, you're only a small young boy and not able to go about the kind of things you might see from a more seasoned and older character. During the demo we hid in newly dug graves, kept low behind walls and made distraction mischief with a slingshot and a few toys we brought with us on this journey across the wild west. As a subversion of a spaghetti western, we're inclined to think this yet another aesthetically fine looking game will delight and happily frustrate in equal measures. El Ijo, Spanish for the Sun, will be out later this year on consoles and PC. And at number two, and as the saying goes, now for something completely different. Toem sees you follow an amateur photographer through what appear to be Scandinavian inspired towns and villages, with it said to be a healthy type of game where you go about snapping pictures and helping the local communities you come across. I can't recall having seen anything quite like this before, and while the trailer has me asking so many, many questions, it looks so darn fascinating that I just want to see and know more about it. And I just love the quote from the developer's website that says the game, well, it's trying to get you to sit down and stop and smell the flowers. How lovely. Toem comes out next year for PC. 
At number one, Murder at Malone Manor is currently in development for PC and possibly consoles with a team looking to have the game out before the end of the year. Baron Malone has been murdered and the suspects are all to be found milling about his manor. Key to liking this so much, having spent time with the demo, is the online co-op option where between three and six players do battle against each other. Here comes the twist, one of the players is actually responsible for the crime and tasked with getting other people to take the rap for it. The games are short and sharp, lasting between three and five or so minutes. With the real-time nature of the gameplay and how easy it is to get into a frenzy whilst playing, sets this one apart from most in the genre. So there we go, that's a wrap for the fourth part of our Most Wanted series, and we'll have another episode up at some point next month. Many thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you all again here soon for more indie game videos.